Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use Space Graphics Toolkit to make a planet. Let's begin by adding a sphere into our scene. To do that, click on Game Object, 3D Object, and then click on Sphere. Let's reset the position of the sphere to 0, 0, 0, and let's reset the position of our main camera to 0, 0, minus 2. Next, let's change the clipping plane's near value to the lowest value, which is 0 0.01. This is very important on scenes where we will approach game objects such as planets to stop them prematurely disappearing. Next, let's click on Add Component and then add the SGT Mouse Look component. Click on Add Component again and then this time add the SGT Keyboard Move component. These components allow you to move around the scene quite easily. If we hit Play and then left click in the game view, you can see we have Mouse Look and if you press W, A, S, and D or arrow keys, you have Keyboard Move. Now let's select our sphere and then in the mesh renderer, let's change the material, the element zero material. Let's change this to the, the red rocky material. This is a planet material that comes with Space Graphics Toolkit. Now let's add an atmosphere here. Actually first let's change the background. Instead of using skybox, let's choose solid color and change that to black, just like space. Now to add an atmosphere, let's right click our sphere game object go to Space Graphics Toolkit and then click on Atmosphere. This will add an atmosphere. It looks wrong because we need to set these two settings. We don't actually have these textures, so we need to generate them. To generate them, click Add Depth. This adds the SGT Atmosphere Depth component. This component will generate these two textures for us. Now, if we hit Play and move the camera around, you'll see we have a volumetric haze around our planet and this is fully volumetric which means our camera can move within the volume of the atmosphere and seamlessly uh, transition from space to the surface. You'll notice the space is black when we are outside the atmosphere but when we, in, when we enter the atmosphere space has now turned blue because that's the color of our atmosphere's sky. So to control these settings, let's say you don't want uh, a white horizon. So let's have a look at the SGT Atmosphere Depth component that was added. You see there is a horizon color setting here. Instead of white, we can make this, let's say, slightly yellow. Now in our game view, you can see our planet slightly yellow. We can choose the inner color here. Inner is like the center of the inside of the planet. So instead of blue, we can make this, say, red and outer color is the color of the sky when you are inside the atmosphere. So instead of blue, let's make this green. Now let's test this and fly inside our planet. You'll see the sky is now green, horizon is yellow, and the surface is red. So instead of just changing the color, you can also change how the transition occurs. Let's move the camera a bit closer for this. Now let's go back to our SGT Atmosphere Depth component. Uh, I recommend you play around these settings in your own time to see what, exactly what they do, but the inner, um, the inner alpha power changes how the opacity changes between the horizon and the inner point of the surface. So let's change this. Instead of 2, let's decrease this. If I make it closer to 1, you'll see the atmosphere on the inside of our planet becomes very thick or if I increase it, then it becomes very thin in the center and then very thick towards the horizon. Similarly with the outer, if we increase the outer power, you'll see the atmosphere around the planet gets much more sharper. And you also notice there are color power settings. So we can also adjust the color transition. To make this more obvious, let's decrease the power of the alpha. And you'll notice that the transition between the red of the inner color and the horizon, the yellow horizon color, is fairly linear. But if we adjust the color power here, you'll see it's more red now, or if we decrease it, it's now more yellow. So these give you full control over all of the colors and the opacity, and these settings can be used to create very interesting planets. So if we hit play, one thing you'll notice is that the planet has the same haze everywhere, even on the dark side and even on the bright side, which 
is good for a star, like this kind of material would be very nice for a star, but not for a planet. So to make it dark on the dark side, we have to enable the lit setting here. So let's check that. Now you'll see the planet has turned very dark. That's because it's now receiving ambient lighting. And first we want to add a light. So in our scene, you see we have the directional light, which is added by default. So let's drag and drop the directional light game object into our lights array here. And it's now added. And we need to add a lighting text. So we can actually generate this by clicking add lighting. Similarly, we did that with the add depth button that added the SGT atmosphere depth component. This time we clicked the add lighting button, which adds the SGT atmosphere lighting component. So this component just generates the lighting text up here. So we have some settings here as well. You notice all of these settings are to do with the sunset. So to see the sunset, let's rotate our directional light a bit so it becomes easier to see. So here you can see the sunset, the transition between the day and night. And you can see here the sunset starts. This is the percentage of where it starts. So 0.4 means 40% of the way into the planet, into the planet from the dark side is where the sunset starts. And then 0.6, that means 60% of the way towards the dark side, uh, towards the light side is where the sunset ends. So for our atmosphere with a very thick haze like this, we want to increase these values. I mean, uh, spread them apart, further apart. And now if we hit play, you'll see we have quite a convincing atmosphere for an atmosphere for a planet of this size. And if you don't want the dark side to be slightly bright like this, you want it to be completely black, just click on window, lighting, and then uh, change the ambient source from skybox to color, and then change the color to black. Now, if we hit play, you'll see the dark side of the planet is completely black. And then the light side is completely lit. So I recommend you play with all of these settings in your own time to see exactly what they do, especially these sunset power RGB. These allow you to change the color of the sunset themselves. I'll show a bit here. So if I change the red up, you'll see that the red, uh, the sunset turns into red before it turns into black. Similarly, I can do this with the green. So it turns to green or blue or some combination of them to create interesting sunset colors. So you may be wondering why the lighting text, the inner depth text and outer depth text are generated by these components. Why aren't they just combined inside the SGT atmosphere component as they were before? This is because on certain devices like uh, mobile devices, generating these textures can be quite processor intensive. So if that's the case and you want to speed like uh, your loading times up, your scene loading times, you can save these textures. So instead of generating every time, you can save it once and then just load that texture very quickly every time. The downside, of course, is that the texture, once you've generated it, you can't modify it. So that's why these components are quite useful because you can adjust these values on the fly. But if you know that you have the perfect settings and you don't want to change them, you can export these textures. So to export, just click the gear icon and then click on export inner texture. And then this will open the save dialog or export outer texture. Same thing for the atmosphere lighting. You just click export texture. So once exported, you can just select it here and then choose your saved texture. And then you can just delete these components. So I hope this video was uh, informative. Uh, please experiment with all these settings in your own time because it's difficult to explain exactly what they do. It's best to adjust the settings and see the visual result yourself. So uh, thanks for watching. Enjoy making your games. Bye bye.